A little more than a decade after the Wright brothers flew that first plane in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, America created the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Their goal was to understand the science of flight. They went on to become the organization that won the space race and took us to the moon. Hi, I'm Chris Anderson. Today we're in Hampton, Virginia at the home of NASA's Langley Research Center. Stay with us for this look at Hometown Heroes. NACA was America's first civilian aeronautical research laboratory. Over a hundred years ago, their engineers worked right here in Hampton, Virginia. They developed wind tunnels to study wing shape and plane surfaces, which resulted in better, more advanced aircraft. In the earlier days, they created a catalog. What shape of wing would make a plane fast and maneuverable? And how would you change that to allow a plane to take off on a short runway or carry a heavy load? Their work was revolutionary. And when the time came to go into space, the transition was natural. During the, the middle of the space race between the United States and Russia, um, the decision was made to create the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. So the old NACA was rolled into what then became the new NASA in 1958. And the Space Act was created, and it, uh, it was really the beginning of America's human spaceflight program. And what was really exciting for us here at NASA Langley is that the American's human spaceflight program started right here. It was the first class of astronauts, the Mercury 7, all the early days of that fundamental research of how do you put a human into space and get them home safely, all of that started right here. So it's pretty awesome to be walking around here at Langley and thinking that you're, you're walking in the footsteps of Gus Grissom and the other Mercury 7 astronauts. So here at Langley, there was a couple of key areas that we focused our human space flight research on. One was helping the astronauts train and learn how to land on the surface of the moon. And we did that right here at the gantry at the Lunar Landing Research Facility. So in this facility, we had a, a simulated landing craft that the astronauts would, that were hooked up to cables and would swing from this giant facility and the astronauts would safely land it. We turned the surface of this facility into an exact replica of the moon. They did a lot of their training at night. They would do it in the darkness of Hampton, Virginia in the 1960s with really bright spotlights to try to capture that darkness of space with the brightness of the sun. Um, so they did everything that they could do right here to try to make it as close to what we thought it would be like operating on the surface of the moon. So some of those first images that came back of the moon were taken by Langley's Lunar Orbiter and those project satellites that were up there. And uh, those original black and white photographs that came back which were very different than the ones that were shot later on by the Apollo 8 crew of the, the famous color photograph of Earthrise. But the original, original one came back black and white and it was the very first look back at Earth from another celestial body. So it grasped the imagination of the world and it was called the photo of the century. So another key research area that we had here at Langley was how do you teach these astronauts to rendezvous two capsules in space. So they had a lunar lander which went to the surface and then when it would come back up it would have to connect with the command module. So when Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong went to the surface, Michael Collins kept that command module flying around the moon. And then when they launched back up off the surface they had to connect the two in flight, in orbit. How do they do that? So we were able to create a simulation of that here in the hangar at NASA Langley and every Apollo era astronaut learned how to do that here. One of the things that the researchers and the engineers and technicians here at Langley have always tried to do is, is create environments and testing and training that, that is as close to what we think it is going to be like in space. So whether it was simulated landings on the lunar surface to learning how to rendezvous and dock in space, they approached it trying to make it as real as possible. And I think one of the greatest compliments they ever got was when Neil Armstrong was asked, what was it like to land on the moon? He said it was like Langley. Recently, NASA was directed by the U.S. government to take us back to the moon within five years. It won't be a quick trip this time. We're going to set up a station on the moon. 
Langley's engineers continue to make the training experience for astronauts as real as possible. They develop plans for every contingency they can think of. The engineers are smart and focused, but they know how to have fun too. My name is Kelly Murphy, and I am the head of the aerothermodynamics branch here at NASA Langley. I manage all the people in the branch, and uh, we are called the aerothermodynamics branch, which is a combination of aerodynamics and thermodynamics, or aeroheating. So I manage um, those folks, I manage their work, uh, attend to the strategic plan of, of the branch. I've known Kelly for over 25 years now. I think Kelly's crowning achievement, if you will, has been with the Orion vehicle, which is our new crewed capsule. And it's going to be going to the moon and to Mars, perhaps. We have to be able to abort the mission at any single point if something goes wrong for the safety of the astronauts. And Kelly's job in all that was to make sure that when that capsule pulls away, that it doesn't go out of control. She designed very detailed, complex wind tunnel models and tested them, came up with thousands of uh, pages of data that the vehicle will now fly on. We are standing in front of NASA Langley's 31-inch Mach 10 hypersonic wind tunnel. And you can see um, we have a whole bunch of different kinds of models here that we've tested. Um, and this has a long heritage. This facility dates back to the 1950s and 60s. Uh, supported the Apollo program, supported the space shuttle program, and now uh, most recently um, Orion, our next generation space transportation. Um, so there's a long history um, and it's still going strong for us here. I know Kelly Murphy from her work on supersonic and hypersonic wind tunnels. However, I principally know Kelly as a sponsor of musical events. My baby's a rocket scientist. For over 20 years, she's been creating listening room opportunities for artists to perform for listening audiences all across Hampton Roads, hundreds of opportunities. I'm not really good at doing nothing. The music piece actually hit me first as a, as a young person. And as much as I flourished in the academic environment, I felt like kind of the real place where I let my hair down and, and really uh, leaned in and relaxed was in, the, was in the band room. She's also a very hard worker in the nonprofit realm. And she accomplishes so much with her efforts there, again, because she's such a can-do, action-oriented person. Um, and she has been involved you know, with several nonprofits at a high level and a very active level. I love playing. I like to play for, um, actually, we have a group that started, came together to play in nursing homes for a local nonprofit. And so that's, that's very rewarding. I love it, but I am not looking to have a career in it. I have one. Um, and I've told a lot of my music friends that I feel like I can do a lot more for our music community behind my computer than behind the microphone. <laughs> You know, sometimes I say, how did I get here? You know, I, I think that that's the advice, is, is to stretch yourself and do something that scares you a little bit. You just have to trust that your hard work is gonna pay off um, and, and go for it. My baby's a rocket scientist. Kelly Murphy has made amazing technical contributions to NASA and her work with musicians has changed lives too. When we come back, we meet a woman whose four-legged friends help young people every day. Stay with us. Freedom, independence, assurance three characteristics common among astronauts. Also, three things that horseback riding can provide when therapy is disguised as fun. In Virginia Beach, EquiKids serves young people with special physical and emotional needs. The same organization runs EquiVets, which serves veterans wounded in the line of duty. The riders can develop self-awareness, self-confidence, and improve concentration while on horseback. Hi, my name is Kathy Chitwood. I'm the program director at EquiKids and EquiVets Therapeutic Riding Programs. I've been the program director for eight years and it's been a wonderful experience. It's been very fulfilling 
and I wouldn't trade my job for anything at this point. The EquiKids is a therapeutic riding program for anyone who is five years old or older. They come in, they do therapeutic riding, they have to have a diagnosis or a disability, and they also have to have a referral from their physician. We have very small ponies from 12 hands on up to big draft horses. So we're able to ride people who are very young at five years old all the way up to about a 230 pound man. There's many benefits to therapeutic riding, whether it's physical or mental health. We've had a lot of kids who have benefited with their core strength, balance, coordination, as well as self-esteem with the horses. Yeah, my name is Peter Lee. This is my daughter, Julia. She takes classes here at Equifeds. She was kind of scared. It was, it was something she's overcome, which is a, a confidence builder for her. Getting on a horse is scary for a lot of them, but after a couple of sessions, they just feel so much better and they feel secure. So it really helps them come out of that. Um, we've had several riders through the years that um, have had different types of injuries and it helps them get stronger over the time of riding. The first time I ever rode, rode a horse was a very little Shetland pony. I was very young. His name was Thunder. He was mean and he tossed me right on my butt. <laughs> and my parents took me home and thought, that's it, she's never getting on a horse again. But here I am many years later. And this is truly the best career that I could have asked for. I think Equikids has a great team um, as far as all of the staff goes. They all work well together. The volunteer pool is tremendous. It takes a lot of volunteers to make this happen. And we've, we've been very fortunate over the years to keep volunteers coming through. We have teenagers that come and then we have adults that are at all ages. So um, we've got a great pool of people that volunteer here. Our instructors are very good at reading how the riders are and responding to exactly what they need to give them that confidence that they need to actually get on the horses. So we have a very low to zero tolerance on behaviors with horses because of the nature of the clients that we serve. We can't take any chances with our riders. So we may screen a hundred horses to come into the program, but we'll actually bring in a very small two to three percent of them to actually come into the program. I've been doing this since I was very young, so I reap the benefits of being around horses just like the rest of our clients do. So I find it very rewarding to be around them, both physically as well as mentally. It's very challenging, but it's also very fun. Some sailors on board the USS George Washington also find great rewards being around horses. These horses, however, need their own rehabilitation. The sailors find they can offer many kinds of help at Circle A, Home for Horses. We have 45 horses. Nobody knows exactly who they come from, where they come from, but they come here to be rehabilitated and become happier. I'm ABHA and Shauna Horsley, and I work in Air V3. I've been volunteering here since July. We have about seven other sailors from the George Washington alone that volunteer out here. We start with feeding. And then once we feed, we let all the horses out to pasture. Once we let all the horses out to pasture, we come back, we milk out all the stalls, we put fresh bedding into the stalls, we put hay into the stalls, uh, dump out old water and put fresh water into the stalls, and then we feed them again uh, in the afternoon. During the day, we will bring out um, a couple of the horses and we will groom them and ride them because just like you or me, they need attention too. So I'm HC2 Jonathan Horak. I work in repair division on USS George Washington, CVN 73. Been coming out here since September, about every Saturday. I like the physical work, fixing gates, uh, making little stalls for many horses to escape the weather. It gives me a sense of purpose. It makes me the happiest person in the world to be out here with the horses, on top of a horse, riding the horse. It's a sense of free. I know it's not for everybody, but believe it or not, a horse has a healing soul. We've all seen the strides NASA has made through our relationships with other countries. There was a time when the space race was against another country. Now the space race still exists, but today it's against technology.
This building, the third new structure built in the last six years as part of the centre's revitalisation plan, is named for Catherine G. Johnson. For those watching who may not know, Ms. Johnson is a human computer, an amazing mathematician who calculated trajectories and played a key role in America's human spaceflight program, including the Apollo 11 moon landing. Featured in the lobby is a beautiful portrait of Ms. Johnson that was taken last year at nearby Fort Monroe by famous photographer Annie Leibowitz for a Vanity Fair magazine article. We also have items here that recognise Catherine and the other human computers, like an official proclamation from the Commonwealth of Virginia and a Group Achievement Award from the NASA Administrator. Researchers from across the centre will conduct a variety of computing projects here, including aerodynamic modelling, entry descent and landing calculations, and computational fluid dynamics. The facility advances Langley's capabilities in modelling and simulation, big data and analysis. Much of the work now performed in wind tunnels will one day be handled by powerful computers, such as those in the CRF. We'll continue with Hometown Heroes when we return. Stay with us. If something is rock solid, it has great strength and dependability, much like the projects developed here at Langley Structures and Materials Laboratory. Rock Solid is the name of another organization that offers its strength to families who have a child diagnosed with cancer. Rock Solid is a nonprofit foundation uh, started by Eric Newman, and they try to build hope for kids with pediatric cancer. What we're doing here today is we're providing playback to a beautiful young girl that, um, with no fault of her own, has just lost out on the ability to play. My name is Anna, and this is my dad, and this is my mom. Rock Solid is here, and they're building me a new playground, so they're basically just kicking us out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so we come out early in the morning, 7 o'clock, we get everything set up. A limo comes around 8.30, takes the child off on an adventure for the day. Uh, usually they go out to breakfast and then their choice of uh, where they want to go to play and have fun while we're here building hope in their backyard. It's a great feeling to see her smiling and excited. We're really, really appreciative of Rock Solid for, for doing this for us. Volunteers get a sense of working together, of giving something back to the community. A lot of them, uh, we have playing it forward who have had some sort of experience in their life with cancer. And this is an opportunity for them to give back uh, what has affected them and their family. I'm, I'm so personally connected to the pediatric cancer world. I was diagnosed with liver cancer when I was three years old. Gave my parents a very rare, um, rare chance of me beating the disease. Ended up beating it, and then finally, after I got back to this one spot at CHKD in Norfolk, ended up throwing a fundraiser, and then a mama bear, which was sitting right there with me, she started to cry. She said that you give me and my husband hope that my son will be sitting in your seat one day. And ever since then, I knew I needed to marry the cancer tragedy knowledge, if you will, and my construction knowledge and married them together and that's where Rock Solid Foundation came from. It's not about a logo. It's not about growing a brand. It's about getting to these families when they so desperately need it. And as long as we stay focused on that, there's nothing that we can't do. And I truly believe this is what I beat cancer to do. Two. She has been waiting for this day for a long time, and it, it, it surpassed probably anything she could imagine. The look on her face was just, just amazing. It means a lot to us for her to have a safe place to play, to have the excuse, you know, now she's going to be really excited about, let me go outside and let me climb and play, and, and that can only mean good things as far as 
her physical well-being too. So uh, that means a lot. So I have been looking forward to this for a while and I'm so glad that it's finally here. The playground is fun and I can actually play on it without having to get sick from people that are actually are sick. For these families, once you're diagnosed with cancer, public places become off limits. But today we were able to beat that as well. They were able to hang out, just what girls should do, just what kids should do, hang out with their friends. And they were able to go out and just enjoy today, not have to worry about all the stuff that cancer can do. Today we focus on what cancer cannot do. Our heroes come in all ages and from all walks of life. Young people fighting for their lives. Men who have won that fight reaching out to strengthen others. Women whose math skills were trusted more than the machines. People who went where no one had dared go before to a place many believed we could not reach. Our heroes do the things we wish we would do. NASA has a new mission, a fresh vision, and it's starting now. Ignition sequence start. All engines up. We have taken tremendous steps. We choose to go to the moon before this dictate is out. We have achieved the earth-shaking, the breathtaking, the groundbreaking, One small step for man. and left a mark in the heavens. Our successes build one upon another and amplify what is possible. The dawn of Orion. It's time we take the next great leap. We're building the next chapter of American exploration, returning to the moon to stay, so we can go beyond to Mars to expand what's possible and further our understanding. The architecture for these missions is already taking shape. We will go with new systems, bold designs, and a sustainable mission. You can hear it, taste it, touch it. We are going. We are training, testing, pressing our pioneering spirit into every component, defining our resolve with every line of code, and securing our success with every welcomed partnership. This is not hypothetical. This is not about flags and footprints. This is about sustainable science and feeding forward the advance of the human spirit. Because we are the pioneers, the star sailors, the thinkers, the visionaries, the doers. And because we stand on the shoulders of giants to go farther than humanity has ever been, we will add our names to the roles of the greatest adventurers in history. Every day, every mission, we advance this call. We are NASA. And after 60 years, we're just getting started. With a fervor we may not have seen in 50 years, NASA is on its way to take us back to the moon by 2024. That means five years of new strides in technology and changing applications of current technologies too. I, for one, am excited to see how everything develops. And at the same time, we will meet a new generation of men and women that will spark our imagination. They will take us with them as we travel out of our atmosphere into new places to experience the world in a brand new way.